future. And the Holy Spirit is in them, guiding them and leading them. Amen. So now, all of these people were bringing up their destinies settled. They didn't have to go back to jail. They didn't have to go back to their miserable life. They didn't have to go, have to go back to famine. Ruth walked into her destiny, and once she married Boaz and had her son, her destiny settled. Never a bad day again in her life. Joseph, never a bad day again in his life. Oh, how many times. Daniel, once he came out of the lion's den, he was promoted, never had a bad day again in his life, and also everyone there had to serve the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Isn't that wonderful? The king ordered that the God of Daniel, everyone must believe in him because I've never seen a powerful miracle like this. Oh, I love it. Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, once they came out of the fiery furnace with not a singe on them, let me stop right there. Many of you watching have had fiery furnaces and destinies and troubles in life that you thought was going to take place and then a curveball was thrown into your destiny. A curveball was thrown into your plan. Whether it was a financial curveball, whether it was a, a, a spiritual curveball, a family problem, something happened that caused that destiny and that, that, that uh, plan to be disrupted. Some of you went through a lot more than that. Had to come out of prison, a brand new person, a brand new man, a brand new woman. Woman, this this is what God calls the fiery furnace. These three men actually got put in the fiery furnace. Physically, we get put in there spiritually, mentally, oh, emotionally. And he's saying, with Jesus Christ by your side, you can come out. Let me explain something to you. In Daniel chapter 3, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Daniel chapter 6 and Daniel chapter 3, when all of them were there going through their trials that they passed, I found it so unique that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said this, before they walked into the fiery furnace, they looked at the king who said, I'll turn it up seven times. And they said this, even if our God does not come through for us, we will still serve him. Even if our God does not come through for us, we will still serve him. Are you there yet? That's complete trust in God. We are not to put our trust in human beings, but we are to put our trust in the God, which is our God, which is within those human beings. Put your trust in the Holy Spirit that is within that person that you are confiding in. Put that trust in the Holy Spirit which is in those employees and those financial advisors and those people that you have to work with daily. Otherwise, you only put your trust in God, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But when they came out of that fiery furnace, they never had a bad day again in their life. Everything was easy. That was the worst it could have got. <laughs> not only did the king again, this was a different king now, did he not say again, everyone must serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everyone must serve the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then they were elevated and promoted, and I'm sure they never had to pay any form of government um, fees again, their family was set, everything good happened for them because they passed the test of faith. They passed the test of faith. They passed the test of faith and their destiny settled. It's not what we do just on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night when we go to church. It's what we do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Matthew 6.6 6 says what you do in secret God will reward you openly. What you do in secret, God will reward you openly. Amen? What do you do in secret? When no one's around, you think no one will know, 
the angels are standing right there. The Holy Spirit is right there. They either leave or they stay. But all of what you say and do is documented in the archives of the spirit realm. And God knows everything. Has your destiny settled? So many people die and go to heaven and never receive their destiny never receive their settlement. They try. Pass the five tests. Pass every class in the University of God per 1 Peter 5.10. First, you suffer. Second, you get perfected. Perfected means cleansing. Get everything out of me that is not of you, God. Perfect me according to your rules, not man's rules. How was someone perfected? God considered many men in the Bible perfected. One of them was David. Noah. They found grace and perfection in the sight of the Lord. Perfection is simply when you say, I am so sorry, Lord. I am so sorry. And you apologize to the people, I am so sorry. I am so sorry, I'll never do that again. That was the devil. That was not me, he was on my back trying to get me to do bad things. That's how you handle perfection. Apologize, repent, and never return to the sin again. There is establishment where God begins to build back in you and get your establishment going. During establishment, you have all kinds of enemies that want to drain you, pull from you, copy you, copy you. There's nothing wrong with copying Jesus. He said, follow me. He said, follow me. But when we copy each other, that's silly. We need to mimic the Lord and copy Jesus. You'll have jealousy, competition, and that's where the next step steps in, steps in. Strengthen. I will strengthen you. How do you become strengthened? The Word of God and knowing who your enemy is and how to defeat them. That is one of the series we're teaching on spiritual warfare. So the strengthening part is actually the spiritual warfare. Understand who the enemy is and get them out. Out of your life, out of your ministry, out of your family, out of your finances, your future, your favor, get them out. And once you've accomplished that, your destiny settles. Amen. It is my goal, when you watch these videos, when you come to the churches, when you come to the services, when you come to my church, where when you uh, do uh, are linked in any way with I Am Ministries, it is my goal to change your life for the better. Not just to hear a good sermon and to forget about it 10 minutes later, I want you to change. I want you to have an opportunity to say, I'm going to do what this message said. I'm going to pay attention to it because it's going to change my life. From Sunday to Sunday to Sunday, those, those of you who are in my church or come to the meetings all over the world, you need, you need change or you wouldn't be there. We all have to better ourselves, even in the business world, even those people that don't know Jesus Christ, they're always looking to up themselves or up someone else. In the same way with the spirit realm, with our spirit man. Our spirit man inside us needs to be dressed and fed, dressed and fed, dressed and fed every day. Just like our outer man needs to be dressed and fed. How do you feed your spirit man? The word of God, worship and prayer. The word of God, worship and prayer. The word of God, worship and prayer. And in that worship is also praise, praising God that it's already done. That's a form of prayer, too. They're all joined together, thank God. How you dress your spiritual man is speaking the whole armor of God over yourself. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 to the end. I put on the whole armor of God so I can stand against the devil's schemes and win. Dress your children with the whole armor of God. Everyone that you are connected with, your staff, your it, it, for your ministries, for your, your, your people that support your ministry, for you bosses, your employees, for the employees, your bosses, your family, your friends, everything that you have, the blood of Jesus, the fire of the Holy Ghost, and the whole armor of God, and the devil backs off because there's a hedge of protection around you now. If you don't, you're wide open to the enemy must get dressed every day. You must feed your spirit man every day or it will die. It will lay dormant and the devil will have free, 
free reign in your life, just flat out free reign. So as you go through the strengthening stage, my goal for you is everyone listening to these videos, everyone coming to the churches and the meetings all over, my goal is to have your life change from Sunday to Monday to Monday to Tuesday, Tuesday to Wednesday and on. Better and better and better. If your life stays the same, let me say this carefully. If you have been in a place where you go to worship and it's entertaining, but your life is still the same. I knew a gentleman one time that uh, he just could not keep a job. Was He was a mechanic and he could not keep a job. Fired constantly from one job to the next. 23, 24, 25 jobs. And he continued to go to the same church all the same time. And I said to him, your church is supposed to be the one that feeds you the right food to where Monday through Saturday is different. Monday through Saturday is different. Nine years in this situation, something needs to change. Your seed is not going into good ground. And your spirit man is not being fed. At least it's not being fed the things that are going to change your life. It might just be being fed good things. I have knowledge. The devil has knowledge of all of this too. The Pharisees had knowledge of all of this too. They lived it. They were part of it. We still abide by, as a Jew myself, we abide by all of their, their seven feasts. But does that mean the devil makes it to heaven? Does that mean the Pharisees make it to heaven? No. It's not head knowledge. It's heart knowledge. It means I do something with what I've learned. If you're not, if your life has not changed for the better, and you've been sitting in that same pew, that's called tradition, it's called familiar spirit. Get out, make a change, behold, all things become new. So the Lord can start you over and learn something that will change your life. This gentleman, after I opened his eyes, the Holy Spirit opened his eyes to making a change immediately. The prophecy that came over his life is that he would have a well-paying job that would never let him go if he made a change and kept it, and he did. And to this day, he has that well-paying job, a very good paying job. Makes more now than he ever had before and even has his house back. God wants you to do something with the information that you get at church. Do something with the information that you do. Reading Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Whatever day your Sabbath day is. Some people have to work on Sundays. Some people have to work on Saturdays. Whatever your Sabbath day is, you take one day off just like God did. And remember, thank Him. This is your day, Father. This is your day, Holy Spirit. This is your day, Jesus Christ. I'm here to serve you. It is my goal to have you, the watcher, the seeker, the one that's hungry for the truth, hungry for change, hungry for power, real power, hungry for authenticity, not fake religion, not routine entertainment. My goal is to have you reach your destiny settlement. So many people die and never receive their settlement. Their settlement from God, which is huge. Their settlement, which is their destiny, completely set out. Now, that doesn't mean that the wealthy people that have reached their goal, that understand what their call is in life, does that mean they're on their way to heaven? No, there's a two part. There's two parts, physical and spiritual, natural and supernatural, physical and spiritual, natural and supernatural. So they may have reached it in the natural, but is there spirit man into the word of God every day? Is there spirit man looking for eternity instead of where they can make money the next day or making sure someone isn't taking their money from them? Or who can they, who can they entertain or who has entertained them? All of the above. Even though we achieve financially on this earth, we must achieve spiritually. It's a two part process, natural and supernatural. Because after you die, your flesh body is gone. The ghost that looks just like you is pulled out and that ghost has to live somewhere in heaven or hell. And if you do not spend time in the word of God daily, you will not make heaven. 
the pizza man came to the door one time when I was entertaining some young people at their house. They wanted me to come over. Their parents wanted me to pray for their young children. And during the meeting, commotion, you know, uh, the, the grocery man had come and dropped off all the groceries. And then the pizza man came and dropped off the pizza. And the Lord immediately said, talk to them about that pizza man. And I had given them all Bibles, and I had said to them, Now, do you invite that pizza man to go swim in your back pool? Do you invite that pizza man to sleep in your bed, to sit at your dinner table, to uh, watch movies with you, or to come to family functions? No! They looked at me, of course, like I was crazy. But my point to them was, You know the pizza man. How many times? Once or twice a week he comes to the door? So he's not really, you know of him and you know him, but he's not really part of your connection because he doesn't know you. You don't spend time together. You know of him, but you know of him. You even know his number. You have it memorized. It's in your phone. The same thing with God, I said to them. Let's put God in the house and let's put us outside that door. How often do we get to know our Father? How often do we read his word? If you want to get to know someone, do you stare at their picture? Do you pet their little image? No. Do you think of them? Or do you read about them? And when you read about them, then you meditate on what you read and you understand what you read. God gave us this book, His Legacy. You want to make it to heaven? You have to read the legacy. It's so easy. It's so rewarding. It's so wonderful. Your destiny, settlement, is at your door. You must pass the test of 1 Peter 5.10. Pass every class in the University of God, and your destiny will settle exactly like Joseph exactly like Ruth and Naomi, exactly like Daniel, exactly like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and millions of other Christians back then and today that are looking over the balcony of heaven and those that are sitting right there with you, those that are joined with you on this earth right now that are alive. We're all in this to pass our test, have our destiny settled, and receive our eternal glory reward. Amen? There is a heaven and there is a hell. Everyone, everyone watching, please accept Jesus Christ, the risen Son of God. What if I'm right? What if this Bible is true? What if you really do have to read it every day? What if you really do have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ? We're not going to make it if we're just the pizza man coming to the door every day every couple of weeks coming to the church every now and then putting in our little time and making us feel good that we did our church time and there's no relationship Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, especially when there's vacation. God, where? Oh, I don't bring my Bible. That's not me. Well, stay outside. Jesus said, Behold, I come. The door knock. He opens. He also said, that many will say unto me, you might as well say many Christians or those that carry my name, many Christians will say unto me in that day, but Lord, Lord, I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this in your name, and he's gonna say, depart from me. I know you not. You never spent any time with me. Spend time with the Lord and repeat this prayer right now after me, the most important prayer you will pray. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me and rose again the third day. Holy Spirit, if there is anything in my life that should not be there, get it out and add what should. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's Book of Life and help save all my loved ones too. In Jesus' name.
if you would like to take a look at our website, it is at iamgo.org. I am go org. It's also under Gabrielle Hope org as well as all of our products and many other awesome products from many other Christian authors are also at, at uh, hopeharveststorehouse.com hopeharveststorehouse.com so God bless you thank you for watching and I pray that uh, you not only hear this message but you pass it on to others and be doers of the word and not hearers only thank you for watching Thank you for spending time with the Lord. He's marking it all down. Everything we say and do, all the time we spend with Him, is written in the archives of heaven. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you again.